What's up, Patreons? My Patreons talking to y'all directly. So y'all can know what's going on. Like I told you, Sugar ain't been telling y'all the whole truth. This is a lot of stuff he want to keep out because a lot of it was street shit and a lot of it was some bull that was going on that he didn't want to get into. You know, and it's a lot of stuff that went down that a lot of people wasn't privy to. And it cost a lot of people a lot of time, energy, and money. Now, when Suge started Death Row and he was going back and forth with Easy, after the stun he pulled with Easy, he was never going to have that opportunity again. Uh, he pulled that at a time where he had money to compete with Easy in that situation. So they didn't have that pull at the time. But after the chronic drop and the situation where they started to get all these record sales and they formed Death Row, they got Interscope back at them. Now they're in position. Now they got the Snoop album finna come out, Snoop the hottest artist in the world, Death Row taking over. So they signing all these artists and they only got off the strength of the chronic. They putting all, bringing all these new artists in right through the door. So while they're planning on doing this, right? A lot of people don't really understand. They didn't really release a lot of albums under their umbrella. They were mostly doing soundtracks because that's how you got your money. You were getting paid more money on soundtracks than you were the album. Because the movie, um, whoever was the movie company, was the movie by Universal, New Line Cinema, they were paying the budget for the soundtracks. And that's where the money was. So the budget money was already there. You was like, okay, so we getting paid. And we getting paid better than we are from putting out a whole album. So... They was like, all I got to do is one song, two songs. I, can I get this kind of money? That movie soundtrack money is something. Now, when you look at Total Picture and what really was going on um, between Easy and Suge, what they don't really tell you about, stuff that was edited out uh, of conversation is all of the slick shit that was going on behind the door that Suge pretty much ain't gonna tell you about. See, Suge tried to fuck Easy E Baby Mama Tracy, and he was trying to get her like he got Diddy, like telling Miss Chalet, hey, you still cool with Tracy, right? Had Tracy come over to the party. Uh, yeah, I wanna have Tracy come over. Cause Tracy and Miss Chalet was still cool, but Tracy didn't feel comfortable coming around should plus at that time should he was just starting to blow but she was not cool with him like that like she ain't really deal with Suge and that crowd because of what he was trying to do and she's just like i don't even know that just don't seem right like girl he talking about paying for this and this so easy and her got into a big dispute and easy he shot the back of her window out <laughs> so she wasn't going, you know, so why he was, she was like, he's trying to tell Tracy and get her a lawyer where she could sue and get all this money from me to eat, which was some low down, dirty shit on shit, trying to tell her, I can get you a lawyer and, and then you could take Eric, you, you can get part of Eric company because he going to either have to pay you or, or the, you know, the part of the company had to be put up. You know, so he gonna have to pay you more in child support. Cause if he ain't been paying it and back child support, and you put that on him, then you know you can take the company from him. So Suge was putting all this shit in his baby mama head, so she can go and try to get money out of him, and was gonna push the narrative so that that happened to fuck up Easy E. So at the same time, Easy E was getting ready to not even fuck with them because of the deal and everything that was going on. 
to try to fuck them up. Should Knight was threatening anybody who basically was trying to work with EZ. You know, so anybody was trying to go up again with EZ and all that shit, when they came out dissing EZ on that first fucking chronic album, they was like, all right, that's what it is. Y'all finna diss us now? All right, cool. Now we coming. Because he had just did an album that wasn't having nothing to do with them. Didn't diss Death Row. Didn't diss Dre. Didn't say shit. He ain't did, he ain't diss not one of them on that album that he put out. Now, because he didn't do that, these guys didn't say nothing. You know, and Ruthless, nobody on there really said anything. You know, when he did that neighborhood sniper and all that, he he was going in a whole new direction. He was sounding more East Coast than anything. And only if you want it, all everything. And he was out. He was out the game, you know, like, shoot, I almost cut my finger off <laughs> when that whole video aired. It was crazy. But a lot of this was done by Suge Knight and his fucked up way of thinking. So here he go again. Should goes and talk to Brian Turner at Priority Records because Priority still want to work with Dre. And they were talking about putting out an album together uh, with, uh, with the dog panel and all the other artists they had. Now, Interscope was like, look, we only interested in Dre and Snoop. That's it. The rest of these artists, we're not going to pretty much distribute. You're going to you can go and do your own, you know, get your own distribution um, with somebody else. Like get another party because we're not going to push all these albums. We don't think they'll sell like the Dog Pound and all that, whatever else y'all talking about. Doing. We like Dre and Snoop. So those two will we'll promote, we'll push those out. So he's like, well, priority want to deal with you guys. And Suge had a relationship with Brian Turner and, and so did uh, Cube and Dre. So Dre was like, yeah, we can work with Brian. So Suge them had did a deal with Brian Turner and King. So once they did that, negotiated those terms everything changed back to their manners but under the condition they had to get rid and step away from easy -E. now that was the thing they lowballed easy -E in the negotiations and he had made them they ain't have no money they ain't even have a company until ruthless records came in and made them all this money they was like, well, why are we going to stick with Ruthless Records when all the talent is gone and the people that made the music are elsewhere? We're going to just do business with them. Ice Cube, Dre, and all them, they gone. We know what the talent is, so we know Easy e don't create anything. So they was like, sorry, Eric, it's just business. So he went to New York, took a meeting with Relativity Media, and did a new deal with Relativity for distribution deal. So Suge had gotten Ruthless Records away from Priority Records, got them away from them, and then they did a partnership with Death Row where they started distributing records. And they distributed the Dog Pound album with Interscope helping in some capacity. But no, they, they it was all to hurt uh ruthless records so that's why easy e came back so hard on them 
because you're trying to wreck his company. Well, he wasn't trying. He actually fucking did it. He wrecked the that damn company. So a lot of y'all don't know that took place so on the Patreon. That's that. Um, yeah, Suge was scared uh, only a couple times. I wouldn't say scared, but on alert because he knew. Like, I don't know where Eric mind state is, but he knew he certain parts of Compton. He wasn't going to go when it was on. You know what I'm saying? Should do. I'm just going to go here and that's it. But I'm barely coming out. He stayed mostly where he was at, uh, protected, of course, by his crew, but should, should could handle his own. But he wasn't going to deal with, uh, with, it, with Eric Wright. That wasn't going to take place. Easy, he had real protection. And let's get to the other thing. Shug was quick, real quick, to go ahead and roll over, show his belly, start wagging his tail when he thought there's a chance he might go to jail. He tried to pay the money so that this dude would would keep him out of jail. That baby Lane, who was in the car, got a check, got a bag to say good things about Suge that Suge didn't do it. Suge was trying to buy his way out of jail. That he would go to somebody who was in the car when Pac was killed. One of those guys in the car to just to get him to say, hey, he can do it. Like, should he not try to hurt me since he was the guy who was attacked? They didn't care. It wasn't even about that. Should and I went and apologized to all the Jewish people, saying that he would never say that a bad word about a Jewish person again on the record, anything. He wouldn't let any of his art even say it no more. And it was all about protecting the Jewish people. Even though that was never the issue. And I'm like, what is he talking about? So no Vaseline, he took the word Jew out of the song and mixed it up. He, I would never let another artist of mine say anything bad about the Jews. Unbelievable. That's what should have did. He went begging those people not to put him in jail. And after all he did, the Jewish people sent them Right to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect your two hundred dollars or your two hundred million dollars. Go straight to jail, which only made him even more dangerous. He had money, and he had to, he was in jail. So now he has full autonomy to use that money as recklessly as he can to extract all type of revenge. So, I'm just saying, it is what it is. So if I could think of any more, I'll let you know, but as far as this part, a lot of people didn't know about it. So, all right, we'll holler later. Deuces.